Hey guys, it's Aaron. I want to take a look at an extension today called JHS Power Bar. It's actually kind of a conglomerate of a bunch of other extensions. These are extensions from people like TomTom, Tig, Enerot, uh, a bunch of extensions. You may have actually seen some of these extensions individually, but what JHS Power Bar does is it brings, I don't know, 25, I don't know, there's a whole, how many buttons are up there? A lot of buttons all in Twin UI. It's available today through Sketchucation. You can download it for free and it gives you access to a whole bunch of different extensions. So I'm gonna hop in and try to give you a quick overview of what all's in here. I could probably do one of these videos on almost each one of these groups or individual extensions, but we'll take a look right now and just give you a taste of what JHS Power Bar can do for you. Here we go. All right, so this is it. Look, look at the size of this thing. Look at the size of this toolbar. So many buttons. All right, so I'm gonna run through here fairly quickly. Some of it's gonna be kind of kind of a high level overview, but enough to give you an idea of what it, what's there. So the first few buttons are softening and smoothing options. So I have different controls in here that will give me different tools to soften selected geometry. Um, this is all these, all of these ones right here are from the AMS Smooth Tools. Uh, including so kind of a nice option in here where I can actually take geometry like this, soften it, and then unsoften it with the click of a button too, which is kind of nice. All right after the smooth tools, we have upright extruder. So you guys have seen plenty of follow me. What follow me does when I take a shape, it's going to take this shape down here, turn it, keep it 90 degrees to the line, and just stretch that shape along. What Upright Extruder will do is along that same path, that same geometry, if I run Upright Extruder, you'll see it actually takes that shape and keeps it vertical as it moves its way up. This is really nice if I'm doing certain geometry where I want that face to always be oriented the same way. The next one is a tool called Face Finder. What Face Finder will do is look at geometry, find geometry that could support the creation of a new face and put that face there. So if I grab this geometry right here and see I just have kind of like this I don't know, kind of a nut kind of shape. If I run Face Finder on this, it's going to go through and find that, okay, I could have put a face right here. If I delete that out, I got one on the bottom. And then it also found one here in the middle. If I look at X-Ray, that is where this collar right here would meet if it had a face between it. So really neat tool to go through and just kind of quickly jump faces into a model. All right, next one. So I got to swallow and remember to breathe here. Offset edge. Offset edge will allow me to take a single edge and offset it. This is not something you can do with regular offset. Regular offset will require you to offset uh, more than one edge or an entire set of geometry. Offset edge lets you literally take one piece and move it perpendicular to itself. Pretty simple. The next one is extrude edges. This lets me take geometry and push it like I would push pull, but with a single line. So let's me take a single line and push it into 3D space. All right, the next one is gonna let me take a line and it will automatically create a rectangular plane of a specific size as specified here, and then push, pull it, follow me it along that selected path. Um, so it's good, but uh, it's, it's kind of automatically creates that rectangle and then creates a follow me with it. Next to that, and I'm sorry, I have to keep looking because I have to look what all these names are, but the other one I have here is pipe along path. Pipe along path will do the same thing, but with a circle. So I can actually set the circle size and it'll create a pipe along there, which is great for a single one. You can see it's actually, created a pipe. So it actually has an opening in it. It's not just a tube on there. The next one after pipe along path is lines to tubes. This will allow me to take geometry more than just a single path. I can grab a whole bunch of geometry and generate that with a bunch of pipes. So this is a pretty simple example, but you can imagine if you had a set of lattice and you wanted to bulk it out from lines into actual geometry, this would be an awesome tool to do that with. All right, copy along path is gonna allow me to take a line and then copy a component along that path. Pretty simple, pretty easy. 
Uh, it's a great way to make chains of things, that sort of thing. All right, then I have a couple of alignment tools, align on red, green, and blue. What this is gonna let me do is select geometry and see I have these four pieces, they're all offset in every single direction. And I can just say align on red axes, align on green axes. And obviously if I take these right now and align on blue, they're all gonna go to the same height and it'll look like I have only one, but I do still have all three of those pieces there. All right, the next one is drop at intersection. So what this is let me do is take a bunch of geometry and just tell it to drop. And it's gonna fall down till it hits other geometry. So see that, it just drops right on top of there. Pretty cool. Next to that is drop to, I can't remember what this is called, drop level. So this is gonna allow me to push things down a specific to a specific height. So the same height, all the pieces, um, which I guess is kind of cool, but that drop to level where it drops onto something, that is really a cool tool. Then I have a mirror option. So you guys know how I love some mirroring. Um, so what this lets me do is select geometry, choose the mirror command, and then I click three times to create a face or identify a face that I want to mirror along. So there you go. So that was pretty simple in that one. But if I wanted to mirror this at an odd angle, like this angle right here, same thing, I could just click here and then click three lines to identify that surface and it'll mirror that geometry over there like that. All right, and more. Uh, super weld is the next one. And what super weld does is lets you take this separated geometry. So I have three arcs here and weld it. So it's now one piece. Easy. Next to super weld is explode curves, which will take and explode this, these welded curves into a bunch of single lines. That works. I'm going to weld this back together to show the next option, which is, oops, got to select it. Explode. This basically is a break curve. So what I can do here, this is kind of cool because I can say break this curve into an even number of segments or break to specific length segments. So if I want this to be broken into exactly 80 segments, I can come in here, type in 80 and hit OK. That wasn't right. Grab that again. Try that again. <laughs> I can say explode that into exactly 80 segments and click OK. And now if I select this, go to Entity Info, it tells me I have exactly 80 segments in that curve. All right, keep going. Next thing I have is nudge commands. These are in JS Mover. And what this ha does is when I pick on it, it lets me use my arrow keys. I'm hitting up, 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 right, 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 left, 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 down, down, down to move your pieces around. So it's a nudge command. The next command after J JS Mover is an align tool that allows you to take, so if you've ever had geometry like this, it's not on any axes at all. It can be hard to get it back on axes and that's exactly what this does. So with this command, I can pick a point and tell it, here's my red axes, Here's my green axis, and it figures out what my blue is. Now it says, now what do you want to align to? So from this point, I'm gonna say, make the red axis go this way, and the green axis go this way, and boom, it flips it so all the axes line up in the same direction. So that's really nice. Like I said, if you've ever had to do that, that align tool can be kind of rough doing that manually. All right, next, I have a command that allows me to this one, honestly, I, I played with this for a while and this was, this was a weird one. So what this lets me do is pick a surface that I want to rotate along and then the line that I want to rotate to. I, I, was, I was playing with this a little bit and uh, it's a cool way to rotate the three click as opposed to using the, uh, the standard rotate command but you'll have to play with that to see if that's something you would use. Uh, I guess there's some people who would prefer that, that method with the different handles to rotate around, but that's, uh, it's not a bad thing. It's, it's just a different way to rotate for sure. Next to that is the Rotix tool. And what this does is same thing, I can hit the angle key, or arrow keys, left and right arrow, to rotate on a surface. So right now I'm rotating, see I have on the blue surface here, 
If I hit the up arrow key, now I'm rotating on red. Up again, we'll take it to green. And I'm rotating as if I was just spinning on that axis just by hitting the arrow keys. Pretty cool command, pretty cool way to do it. You do have the ability of changing the angle down below so you can actually, again, it's like a nudge command, but for rotating. All right, next we have the ability to take a group of items and randomly scale or rotate them. So here I have three random scale, random rotate, random scale, and rotate. So what happens here is every time I click this button, the selected items are going to set, get set to a random vertical scale. I click it a couple times, it's going to change each time. So I'm going to undo to get back to flat, and I'm going to hit the random rotate. Same thing's going to happen here, but it's going to spin it about its middle of the axis. So it's going to spin, spin. Each time I do that, it's going to do it randomly. So I'm going to undo to get back there. Now with all of them selected, I'm going to hit rotate and scale. This is the cool part. So that actually is going to go give me something totally different. Look at that. Very cool. Again, every time I do it, it's going to randomly reapply that filter. So this would be great for if you ever need, like, I don't know, you have a bunch of flowers in a flower bed or trees in a forest, something like that. This is going to give you different orientations and sizes to make it look organic as opposed to, you know, a bunch of soldiers standing in a row. All right. Next item is called Proxify, I believe. Proxify component. So what this is going to do is take any component you have. This does have to be a component and replace it with a box. So you can see this is actually a box. So if you have big, heavy trees, things that just weigh your model down, something like that, cars in the driveway, that sort of thing, you can proxify them. What this does is it creates this empty box saying there is a thing here, but until you come back in and click proxify again, you won't actually see it and you won't have to worry about it weighing down your model. So it's a cool toggle that you can automatically apply. The next one is called Compo Swapper. And what this lets me do, pick Compo Swapper, pick one component, and then pick another, and it'll swap them out. They do have to be in your model to use that, to, to switch in between there, but it is a pretty cool way to uh, switch them out. Again, you can use this for proxy work, just like the, the other tool we were just looking at. We're getting there, we're almost there. All right, this next one, what this can let me do is take a geometry, so then it's like this group right here, and it's gonna create a control cage around it. This is FFD, so when I do that, I click that, see the little points that showed up? They actually showed up in their own uh, component here, and if I grab them and modify them, so if I grab those lines and I scoot them out, the geometry that it's connected to is gonna to move too. So it's a neat way to kind of kind of scale, but it it's allows me to do more deformation uh, along the axes by pulling those points in or out. Pretty cool. All right, after that, we have some subdivision tools. So I have an option here, which is subdivide face. So if I run that, it's basically just gonna take the selected geometry and break it. It does not worry about uh, leftover space. You can see it doesn't, so it doesn't necessarily align to the corner. So I have these odd quads on the end or, or n-gons, but it does break it into pseudo quadded geometry. Likewise, I have an option here, which is subdivide, or I actually think this one is called split up. And that what that's going to do is take any quad shapes I have and break them. So you can see in this case, it went through and broke them. If I select it all again and run it a second time, it's actually going to put that same, do that same thing a second time and I'll end up with X's as opposed to just individual breaks. So it is an option, a way to break your geometry down into smaller geometry, into finer geometry. Uh, obviously on a square like this, it's pretty simple. If you had a bigger geometry, you know how you'd, you'd create more fidelity that way. All right, almost there. Um, this last, Last one, I think maybe this one's called, I can't remember, there's, there's so many. Yeah, this is split up, and this is just basically exactly what it says, break this into this many divisions. This is awesome. This is a quick and easy grid tool. It does make equal grids to the size of your overall geometry. Super easy way to break a surface into multiple pieces. All right, last set of tools here are have to do with uh, geometry like this. If I grab all this geometry, and I hit this first button right here, which is C points, it's gonna create a point at each of those, here, I'll, I'll move it straight up right now. So you see it created those 
spots at every intersection. Kind of cool on its own, but when you use it along with the other pieces, it gets even better. So the first thing I have is draw a line. So this will take any of the selected points and connect them together with a line. It's neat. I don't really know what I would use this for. I couldn't think of anything off the top of my head, but it does create kind of a cool, unique geometry, which maybe if I was to use this in conjunction with pipe along path or something like that, I could get a cool looking piece right there. Um, the other option I have is to select all these points and I'm going to actually put it back down is to select these points. And then the other thing I can put here is C points in place where if I select geom that geometry and I hit place, it'll actually put a component at each of those points. So I can actually align to a grid this way, or I think of a lot of cool ways with like meshes that I could actually put specific geometry at intersections of different lines. So there you go. That's just a whole bunch of really cool uh, geometry editing and creation tools all put together into one bar. A power bar, if you will. Check it out, it's available on Sketchucation plugin store. You can download it for free. Link down in the description below. If you like that, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create a couple of videos a week and you will be notified if they or a live stream come out if you're subscribed. Most importantly though, please leave a comment. This video was created because somebody asked if I would take a look at JHS Power Bar and let me know what they thought about it. No wait, let them know what I thought about it. That makes a lot more sense. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.